So a lot of questions. What happens when we begin manufacturing children? I mean, you know, this is where we're going to look at. You know, like we just saw a little bit in Gattaca. You know, how do you how you treat it differently? Um, what happens to identity and individuality when clones a replica of another person? In the LCA statement, it's kind of an interesting thing. It says we all have the right to our own gene, genome. Um, and how would you like to be Einstein's clone? <coughs> would that be something to live up to? <laughs> the clone isn't consenting. You do not have a choice in being that. Um, our clone children possession is designed to fulfill parents' wants. No longer a stranger, we want them. We were talking about the island with uh, Ian McGregor, where the clones were actually told that they were living in this society where they could, kind of like could move on to a better place, which is actually what happened when they were living, the person who they were cloned from needed a donation of an organ that they had, so they would you know, get rid of the clone and use the organ to transplant. And the clones were not humans. Um, I don't know, that's their background. Are we kind of going on all on our own? Well, that's interesting. I've not seen it. Here we go. Uh, yep. It was really narcissistic. Another me to love. Right? Is that what you want? What if children is a clone of the spouse you were no longer married to? How will they be treated? Um, what if it's used without someone's consent? You know, you could lose someone without them knowing. Know Most churches reflecting on this really a question about whether cloning, um, question cloning of human beings. Um, genetic uh, engineering is a little different. Uh, thing is, you know, things dealing with um, um, abnormalities, you know, and fixing it is there's a lot of openness to, you know, questions about what it means when we're trying to make someone better. Um, how many of you saw the movie Hannah? How many of you saw the movie Hannah? Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm giving that away if you one, but the gist of it is trying to build a better soldier, less, less emotive, uh, more prone to violence, you know. Uh, that what happens when we start creating things of that nature. Now, the question is, would we ever do that? But it's always in its possibilities. We begin to understand how people work. Um, next one. Now, we also have a stem cell issue. And I want to, we're kind of coming in over our time, but I'll just raise this up. The gist of stem cells, and correct me if I, if I don't put this right, is they're, they're, um, where is it? We have their cells that have not differentiated yet, which means that, especially when, um, right after uh, fertilization, the, the tissues have not changed into other types of tissues. So they can, they have the capability to get right. They, they can become anything, and so, especially, um, I know someone who was, you know, injured and was in a wheelchair. You know, spinal injuries. This holds all kinds of potential for people to walk again. You know, with this, the issue that comes into this is that while you can find it in a number of, of places in the um, in the body, you know, umbilical cords we're talking about, uh, placentas, but also places in the adult body, they're also found in embryo embryos, which is where they were discovered and uh, researching on aborted embryos. There are two types of stem cells, though. Yes. You okay. have adult stem cells, and adult stem cells are being used in therapy as, 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 right. as we speak. Right. I think the bigger issue, for correct me if I'm wrong, is I think that the embryonic ones, though, are more, they're, they're um, easier, they, they work better, they're more viable, is that the word yeah. I think? Um, um, but there, there hasn't right. been anything successful done with the embryonic stem, stem cells. Right. And the other issue that comes in is we, you know, I think we can't remember we talked about this before, but um, oh yeah, when we were talking about that a couple of weeks ago, the woman who had, um, was fired from her job because she was uh, she had in vitro done, and you know, and part of that was that she had signed because it was a Catholic school that she you know wasn't going to do anything like that. But there were like a hundred thousand unused embryos from in vitro fertilization procedures that are just frozen. And the question is, what do you do with that? And it's interesting because there's a lot of diversity actually. Um, the LCA's draft statement the last I'd seen was that there was an openness to looking at this also research where other denominations are not. Um, you know, are you participants in something that you feel is not right? Or, you know, it's, it's a hard one for people. Yeah? I just feel like the whole point of all of this and, right. and all, of, all of these issues is we're so afraid to suffer. We're so afraid to feel any kind of pain, any kind of discomfort, any type of inconvenience that, that We are kind of raising the next. Go ahead and click on it because there are issues that. Um, uh, well, this is what we already talked about. Uh, 
click on the next one. Um, like, for one, the science, technology, and commerce connection, right? Is research isn't primarily by governments or universities, but by biotech corporations. Um, and it's often driven by free market capitalism, desire, I didn't put a sorry, desire for profit, right? You know, Jesus talked about this, you know, if it's driven by profit, what happens if you're, you know, like, the scene with the family encouraging, well, you know, you, want, you don't want to leave anything to chance. Well, is it a philosophy? Is it also a way of getting you to buy something more you didn't want to buy, right? I mean, we live in this market economy. Uh, often, um, and we're talking about consumer demand, we're in a consumer culture. We want something, we don't want to suffer, we don't want to have to do this. We have a desire or a, or a desire slash need for health, success, to ease suffering, to reproduce, or maybe even to be immortal, right? Um, and market not only seeks to meet our desires and demands, it also tries to create them. We need this. We need to have this. So, here's my case. What's about Tuck Everlasting? <laughs> about the family who actually finds basically the, the fountain of youth and they live forever, but everybody else dies around them, you know, and it's like empty. Time cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, we're kind of nearly at time. I'm going to click on just to um, let's see, keep going on. Uh, these are interesting things, but we can talk about it another time. Um, Faith in, in contemporary issues down in scripture raises some things like, for one, we've been talking about Jesus transforming initiatives which give insight to all these areas of life, even if they don't directly address them. Jesus was talking about genetic engineering. Um, but how do we treat life? Like, one of the interesting things in the ELCA statement on cloning is that while they, they, don't, they don't support it, you know, if it happens, each of those individuals are real people, and they deserve everything every other person does. And if this is happening, then how do we talk about this as people, saying if everyone matters, we need to respond to them, no matter how they came into being. Um, Jesus taught to live the norms of love and justice that are always relevant. You know, is this a just thing that's happening? Is, is there someone who's not having their consent in this? Um, and that healing is central. And I think that's kind of the dividing line between what you were talking about. It's like, well, we don't want to suffer. Um, but Jesus was also about healing. And where does the line come between healing and this kind of narcissistic, live it forever, deny the reality of the way life works kind of way we live? Um, and that our modern theological reflections are also important, that we, you know, we need to have people of faith who are reflecting on these things. And people are doing this now. I mean, um, actually, the seminary I think went to, I think every year they have this faith and science um, uh, event that you can go to wrestling with modern issues. Um, and how does this fit with the moral vision and character of God's people? You know, um, you know, because, I mean, thinking about this, in some ways, this was, you know, think of what happened about with Hitler. There was a whole idea that the, the Aryan race was genetically superior. We used to think that people of other races were, in essence, other species, even, you know. Um, and now we can say we could actually make it happen, you know. How do, you know um, but how does that fit with God's moral vision and character? You know, if every single person, no matter what, is valuable, how do we respond? Um, so, I want to, uh, we're kind of at the end time, I really appreciate people sharing reflections. I know other people did, but if you want to hang around afterwards and talk, I think that's a really cool thing to do that, uh, to share. Um, let's, let's close our time in prayer, though. The, the Lord be with you. Thank you. Let's pray. God, we think of uh, your words as you walk this earth, of the value of people, um, of the value of, of each life, um, that uh, you're giving yourself for us, of your entering into the lives of those who are broken, saying that you didn't come just for those who are righteous or whole or genetically superior, um, but you came for us sinners, broken human beings. And we ask that you would remind us again as we wrestle with new things in our society how to continue to respond as your people. As we look at this world, we know that probably these things that while we're talking about, whether they should happen or not, probably will happen, that we will have to know how to respond to it your people uh, in that future with people who have, who have gone through this and remind us all that each one is loved child of God. So help us in this journey be with us as we wrestle with these things and walk this path. 
in your precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.